I want you to uh, welcome you to another uh, week of drawing portraits. Um, this one would actually be probably one of the last ones, seeing that we went over it all. This is week eight, I believe it is, um, or something like that. We are going to use the sketch that we did last week. Mine is kind of faint. And we are going to shade him in in any way you want and we are going to alter our sketch to the point that you go okay you know this is this is kinda how I want it um, in this lesson it might be a little longer one but it's important that we do it um, is to change your sketch and not be afraid of going completely the other way than your sketch is um, the sketch is nothing more there than guidelines um, to help you make a portrait. Um, I'm gonna do it in my style. You can do it in any way you want. My style is kinda dark with a lot of deep shadows and high contrast versus deep shadows. I like a dark background so I'll probably do that. So I might break out some charcoal or something else to, to do that but we'll get to that point um, when we get there. First what I wanna do is I wanna go over the materials that I'm gonna use. Um, I got a regular old pencil here. This is a regular um, HB standard pencil you get. This is a novelty pencil from Ringling College. Um, but any regular old, you know, yellow pencil that you can get is good. You know, the the um, the cheap penny pencil ones. Um, then I'm going to use a 2B, which is optional, but I'm going to anyway uh, because I like working out in stages. Um, the next one that I'm going to use is a 6B. This will be my darkest, darkest. So we're going from light to middle to dark. Again, the rule of three that I like working with. Um, if you don't have a 2B, then you can always use more of this one. Uh, the difference between the two is not going to be humongous, but it's enough. Uh, it saves a lot of you know scratching and, and stuff around. Make sure your pencils are shot. Nothing is more annoying than having to stop halfway. Uh, I'm going to use a variety of erasers to get to what I want. Um, I'm going to use my super duper electric racer. I'm going to use my pen eraser and I'm going to use my uh, my naped uh, track one eraser which I caught. Um, they all do a little different things. I tend to use these for uh, for the eyes. This one is more for smoothing certain areas out and this one is more for the rougher work that I'm going to get into. Um, the other thing that I might or might not use is a blending stamp, uh, bl a blending stump. This one's completely beat to crap, but it's still, it still works fine. It already has uh, graphite on it, as you can see, because I use it. Um, this is optional. Uh, excuse me. This is optional. I might not use it because I know that not everybody has one. I've got my sketch up here. Uh, I'm not going to use any reference uh, for it. Hey, T. Um, before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what I'm going to do with my sketch. Okay, Let's see if I'm still in the picture. Okay, so I've got my sketch here. It's very light. That's the whole thing about your sketch. If it's too dark, uh, use an eraser to go over it. And um, I'm going to change it up. Uh, what I'm going to do, as I always like doing, I like starting with the eyes because I'm right-handed. I like working from left to right because then I won't smear it. That whole rule will be out the window in about five minutes when I get into my drawing idiom because it's just kind of that way. I, I start out with good intentions and they go out the door rather quick. So what I'm going to do is um, um, I'm going to look where both my eyes are. I'm going to start with my left eye. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rough in the shape of my eye right there and because I like really deep shadows I'm gonna I'm gonna not go all around the eye this serves two purposes um, one of them is that it is easier that way to actually get the eye shape in that I want and to keep them both at the same um, same shape because of the shadows I can make it darker or lighter as I go um, I know where the bridge of my nose is going to be so I'm going to roughly put those in right here because the light of the ball of my nose is going to be right there 
<clears throat> Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in them. Um, this is would be the top of the eye. Would be roughly about right here. I like got. And feel free to turn your paper around if you need to. Uh, I feel that it's easier to turn the paper than it is to turn your arm. So I'm going to do that. As you see, I'm making a double line. That's because I'm going. I'm putting in the shadow, uh, the the highlight that I'm going to keep. I'm going to make this line not go straight. And mine is going to be, of course, grumpy looking. So I'm going to have him kind of. I don't know. Put this part up. And I'm using all the knowledge that I've given you before. His eyebrows are on top of here, but because they're it's dark, they kind of sag. I'm gonna put in the highlight of the eye. Am I in it? In it? Yes, I am. <coughs> Remember, you have to mirror it one on the other side. And as I like, if I, as I go along, I like putting in my darkest darks it will give you a sense of what is working and what is not and your drawing will go through several stages of development kinda like kids they get born and the idea of having one is cool and so you start it, you start with good intentions and before you know it you have one and then it becomes harder because you want to raise it right. Um, I picked the dark dark areas and just basically using my lightest color pencil and coloring them in. Don't go overboard and making them too black because I it's easier to put on than take off. So what I'm doing now is around the eyes I'm gonna make it black. Then I'm gonna probably work down my way down toward the noses and then the mouth area rough in some of the hair where I want it and then work my way up from there. I'm gonna go over this part a million and one times. You know, darkening areas, using my eraser to lighten it up, uh, stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, another question, how did you get to where you really liked the level of contrast? Okay, um, the higher the contrast between light and dark is what makes a painting painting. Um, it gives 3D uh, reality to it and it gives a lot of emotion to it as well. Um, it takes a little bit of guts to go as dark as I tend to do, but once you get to that point you'll see that it, it makes for a better portrait, at least I think so commitment issues. Yeah, we're still uh, waiting on Gina. Come on, Gina. That's all root Gina. It's just a, a, you don't have to go as dark. Cool. Okay, so the darker you go with the portrait, um, maybe I can show you one of them that's in here. Let's see. Ah, this is a good one. Okay, the contrast between all the light areas and the dark dark is what makes a good portrait and what you tend to leave off. You know, if you want something that is very expressive and very, you know, striking, I believe that the, the, the highest contrast you can get into a drawing is it. You know, that, that, that makes it makes it the best and with that you tend to just have to leave whole parts off a portrait this is another one, you know, deep deep shadows you know, the deeper the shadows you, that you add into it, the better it actually is did you get everything set up now? don't worry, you only missed the first five minutes and I, I recorded it, so don't worry about it Alright, so what I did, just to recap it real quick, is I'm now going to decide where my darkest darks are going to be. You can't copy this. You can if you want to, but you have your own sketch. This is the sketch I did last week. I 
erased a whole bunch of it to make it very very light because I want to change it we're gonna change it a lot we're gonna change it to the point that it's not even recognizable as the original sketch anymore okay so what I did is I drew my first eye and I'm gonna leave this part light for now this is my lightest of the darks that I'm going to. I, all my dark darks will be darker than this, but because I want to put all my darks in at the same time right now, just to see if it works. And I'm going to start thinking about where my, my, my higher planes are. Here's one. So I'm going to, you know, I know that, well, we all know that if you frown, you get those wrinkles right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of making it straight, I'm going to curve this. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this part roughly over here. This is where my other eye would be. And as you see, they're roughly the same size. But because of my shadow, my light will be coming from this part right here. Maybe. Curving? I'm curving this part right here because of the... Um, the frown lines that you get right here. Uh, the nose is not perfectly straight. This will be the time and that you will, when you when you're putting in your darks, think about where things will be hit by dark and and, and light. Again, not using any reference. Don't worry about any likeness. We are going for. Um, for for shadows, we're going for contrast. We're going for um, we're going for for emotion at the moment. We are not going for super duper likeness. That's why I said don't use anything that involves doing a celebrity. Don't do a family member. By God, don't start doing a family member right now because you will remember them different than they are think about the expression that you want to put in your um, um, uh, uh, the expression that you want to give your 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 portrait and this is just my standard to be for my standard HB penny pencil and I'm going to rough in all my darks because that's something that I, um, I believe that is a very good way of indicating or seeing if my my portrait works. Make sure to to turn your your portrait around as you go and work along. Um, I know my hair. I want to have I have want to have this way. My light is coming from this part right here, so this part will be the dark side. This part will be the lighter part. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to see that this part, because his eyebrow is going this way, there's a sticky out bit right here, so we want to have, we want to hit that with shadow, because it will cast the shadow going from this way. <coughs> I'm not worried about direction when I'm putting in my, my, my first color. This, in painting, will be blocking in. This will be your honor painting. Um, if you want to stick in in, in artsy fartsy terms, this would be your under drawing uh, more than anything else. Because we're not doing anybody special, we are not. Um, at least I am not worried about perfect likeness or anything. I am. I am. Um, I am. I am. Um, indicating where I want my shadows to be. Um, I'm, I'm putting all the thick shadows and because it is pencil don't go overly crazy with the things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, because I know the light is gonna come from this part, this nostril will be darker at this point. Okay. This is the bridge of the nose. So we know that there's gonna be a shadow right here. Okay. We also know that this part is high, right? Because the nose sticks out. So underneath, the lips are going to be 
let's see, roughly right here. Mm, kind of like this. Is it still with me that far? Okay. Tell me if I come out of screen because I can't see the little screen. So I know that the 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 filtrum, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Will be roughly about right here. And it follows the curve of the upper lip. Okay. So I'm gonna gonna put that roughly in right now. Just don't worry about it, it's pencil. You know, use your eraser to erase the the the, the, the bits that you don't want. You know. Use the guidelines that you want to to make sure that everything is still in the say in the right position. Check yourself a million and one times. It's easier to do it at this stage than it is when you are going to do everything out. Okay. So we're at this point. We're right now. Okay. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to put an indicator line right there. Is where I want my mouth to be. I want my mouth to be roughly right here. Uh, like that. <clears throat> Put in the little deep shadows right here. You see there's some purple on my paper. I'm going to leave this part off. I'm not going to do much with this because it's going to have deep shadows right here. I am going to you know, roughly put it in, remember, halfway of the eyes is where it comes down. Okay, I'm going to put in the, again, the deepest shadows, what I want. So I'm going to have this part bump out a little bit like this. Now remember, lower lip doesn't catch it lower lip does not go all the way down to the all the way up to that point now remember things are gonna go south along the painting we're gonna erase things we're gonna go and and add things we're gonna go change things up as much as we want now remember where the curve of your mouth is it's gonna be a line right there I'm gonna put it really do uh, you know in because I'm, I'm indicating where things are going to go. Uh, because the mouth is right here, I'm going to have a curved shadow right here. Is it still light enough? Do you guys still see it? Yeah. Okay. Now, is it a skinny guy? Is it a fat guy? Is it whatever guy? Um, um, I'm going to put in the, the rough outlines of his face where I want them to be. I'm going to have him you know, roughly skinny. Yeah, so I'm gonna go over there. This jawline is gonna be right there. We already know that, all right? And it's basically mirrored the other way around. I'm gonna show you a nice, cute, way, uh, an easy way. Okay, so I'm gonna show you an easy way of of making sure how to put in the facial. Uh, shape as we go along. Um, I'm actually thinking of lowering the the jawline a little bit. Okay. Now we know that the ears will be right here and right there. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put in top of the head and I'm gonna think now what kind of hairline I'm going to give him. Um, I'm gonna ruffle in some some shapes so he's gonna have like a, a swoop on one side. And in a couple minutes I'm gonna stop and do the um, do a, uh, a Q&A. Okay. What I'm gonna do is his hair is gonna come up about right here and go that way. Um, you have to start making decisions right now uh, as you're drawing along as to where you want things to be. I'm going to cut his ears off right there because I think his ear looks better if more of it is in shadow. Um, 
His neck would be about here. So his collar of his shirt will be roughly about there. And notice I'm not doing anything on that side. So now I've got this, I'm looking at it and go, okay, I'm not particularly fond of the mouth yet, but I'm not going to be worrying about that. Um, let me put in some lines, some other indications of where I want things to be to see how it works out, if, I, if I'm liking it or if I am, um, have to change things. Ah, that worked a lot. Sometimes one little 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 thing will change a lot and I'm thinking about planes we know that there's a plane right here and my light is coming from over here so this part would be in shadow as this part would be a light because it is a ball remember that's number one so I'm gonna roughly put that in there Some other little indicator lights of a line indicator light. What the hell? Okay, so I got this. I am now going back in. This is this is basically all the rough outline that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna for now I'm gonna skip this pencil and I'm gonna go to my 2B pencil. I'm now gonna go back in the original part right here and I'm gonna start darkening it up. This is where you want good paper. I'm using printer paper because it is easier for me to work with um, um, to, to move it around for the show. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to uh, to concentrate on the eyes. Nothing more, nothing less. Just the eyes. Am I in the picture? I am in the picture. Okay, so what I'm going to pick out is I'm going to pick out the darker parts. Make sure your pencil is sharp. Um, the sharper your pencil is, the easier it works. Sharpen it with whatever the hell you want. As you can see, I, I use beavers to sharpen mine. And remember, the eyes aren't completely round, so flatten off the bottom part of your eye. This will give the illusion that the eye goes this way. Okay. <coughs> and this is where I'm going to put a little bit more force on my on my pencil to to get the darker parts I want. And I'm not going to make this all e evenly black. I am now going to think of uh, where my light is coming from. My light is coming from, again, this side. Okay, so I know that this part right here where the eyebrow is will be the lightest. Because we're going to have the full of the eye, the eyebrow, and then this part will be semi-dark. So I'm going to extend the dark from over there into this part. Then I'm going to, above the little highlight that we made, I'm going to extend the dark from over there. Most highlights are covered both by something dark, and I'm going to, I'm having actually trouble seeing it myself because it's getting to dark, get dark here. <coughs> so I'm going to go from over here. Don't make this a perfect straight line, even though I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm going to extend this shadow onto the bridge of the nose. And again, I'm going to go over this with my 6B. This is just my 2B. Okay. Just 
talking to parts on one talker. Smoothing certain things out, you know, altering the little the little shadows where I go. Can you see the difference between the two eyes? So you can clearly see the darker parts that I darkened right there, and the uh, uh, the, 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 the the light parts. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. You know, above the highlight, down the highlight. I'm gonna flatten out my eye because eyes aren't always completely completely round, except for certain. Um, emotions <clears throat> you see that I made a mistake there or at least something I want to change so I'm gonna grab my eraser and do that now and curve it in like that and again I am picking out now my my darkest darks I'm leaving part of it too I'm not making it all dark not all of it is completely, completely another black. Think of your transitions. Think of your transitions because you want to have a smooth transition between dark and light. And the eyebrow. Here we go. Smooth it all out. Um, for instance, I'm going to talk in the highlight up here. I'm not sure how much this will show up on video. Oh, it does still. Okay. So the eyes are done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move downwards. I'm going to um, I'm going to work a little bit more about this shadow. I'm going to go and work on the nose, the nostril. Think about where that shadow is going to be and what shape it will be. <clears throat> this is in um, um, if it, this was figure drawing what I'm doing now is I'm basically picking out negative space if it was figure drawing I'm, I'm picking out the, the I'm drawing the shadows not the highlights and because this is the darker part I'm still darkening everything else but I'm not going to go over as much as I did the other ones and I still have one more pencil to go that goes over this Turn your pencil on its sides to get nice broad strokes of, uh, of smoothness. <coughs> Sorry, zombie virus. Okay, don't be afraid of bouncing over the paper. You know, if you see something that you go, oh, I want that changed, go ahead and change it as you go along. Don't worry about it. You know, nobody says that you have to work from here and then down and then go back up again. You know that one I'm gonna work a little bit more on the mouth am I still in the picture? I'm still in the picture okay. start thinking about your questions in about a couple uh, five six minutes I will start doing my pictures what you can do is you can go over with your 2B like this darken the whole thing if you know the whole thing was going to be darkened and then go back in and go okay let's see I want this to, this the light is going to bounce off his upper lip so that the lower part of his upper lip will be in shadow, right? and this part will be in shadow because we know that this part is casting a big old shadow so I'm going to put in the shadow right here Okay. at this point it's just building up blocks of shadow where do they go? how do they look? what is casting what? is it going from, from you know your light is going to come from over there, then that part is going to come over there. Change things as you go along. Because of this pencil, you can always, always, always erase it. There's no doing wrong when you're doing pencil. Besides, we're not using any reference, so it could be anybody and anything. I'm going to put in some shadows <coughs> from his upper lip, of his lower lip, excuse me. And I'm going to realize that the lower, the chin, part is right here so it'll curve right it'll 
little curve right here because of this shape right there. So I'm going to put that one in. Then we know that um, there will be a shadow right there cast by its lower lip. Because the light's coming from over here, this part will be in light. I'm just constantly reminding myself where does the light come from? What breaks up the stream of light? How light is that shadow? How dark is that shadow? Is that is that shadow one color or one tone or value? Or is that that two, three, four, five, six ones? Do I have to make it completely black or am I going you know do I do I um, do I do I go in one go or do I do it in separate you know in separate ways and it's easier to build it up in separate ones than it is to do all in one go I'm still sketching things are still gonna go change you know wherever I want but I also know that this part will be the darkest so technically what I can do is I can take my 2B go over it I'm going to use my finger excuse me, to darken it, except the, light, the highlights even if I do by accident, screw that, I can come back in with my um, with my eraser and put it out, can you see the difference between the two? I think you can, if it gets too dark let me know because uh, I can turn my light back on or my light on ok, I'm going to put in the dark shadows that are the corners of his mouth, like that always realizing where they come from and what they do what is the what is the shape of it where does it come from what is it casting and don't worry about it. if it's too dark use your eraser to lighten it up when you go along I tend to use little circular motions like that, to put in shades and then just kind of fan them out with my finger. I know I've got the blending stump right there, but I'm not sure if everybody has one, so I don't want to be constantly using it too much. Uh, it also gives a, a very distinct feel, an overly worked feel very quickly, so I'm staying away from it as much as I can. Another thing that I will do is I'm going to put in very dark around the face. We're working with high, with with um, with high contrast. Last, watch out for your eyes. And this will serve two purposes. It will. Let's flatten this one out. It'll serve two purposes, making the background of the face dark. It will make your light li look lighter, and it'll give you the option of changing the face as you go along. That is why I like making the background of my face is darker because I can I can take away from it. Just make it sure that you, when you sketch your face out, that you roughly are bigger than what you want to because it's easier to work in than it is to work out. Because I'm going to uh, go and rough in my outlines of the, f the rest of it. Be excuse me, because it is pencil I can always take off. So I'm not that worried about going over things that I want to go back in. I can just use my eraser and change it up. What I want is I want to see if the contrasts work and a floating hat never really works. As you see I go all over the place just left, right, up, down, it doesn't matter at this point. Because my light is coming from this side I'm gonna have this one completely dark. So if my drawing is gonna end right here I'm going to go over these sides of my face and darken it straight up to there. No ears, no nothing. And even if I look at later on and I go, oh, I need an ear. Just take out my eraser, 
pick up the graphite that you don't want. Be careful if you're losing a, uh, using a loose piece of paper. You will rip your paper going over this quick. Now when you're doing all of this, if you're following along with me, take your time. Please, don't go as quick as I do. Full single. I'm going to leave this part because I know where his hair is going to be. His hair is roughly going to go around this part. So what I'm going to do is I am going to turn my drawing around very lightly. Put in a little layer of graphite on its side, very light. Still want it dark though because I want it darker than the rest of his face. my blending stump on its side, finger on top so it won't break, smoothing it out. Granted, this isn't the best paper to do it on, but it will work. Go in circles. What happens is, is the paper on your, on your blending stump is picking up the graphite. And it just smooths it out. You can use a brush. Don't use your fingers. Using your fingers will only put crap on your paper. And remember, this isn't my talk of stock yet, so it doesn't matter. And put in shadows. But I don't want to do that right now because this is not my darkest stock yet. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my 2B again. And um, I'm going to put in some highlights in his hair. I'm going to have him slip up that way. We need a name for Mr. Drawing here, too. So. And because the light is coming from this part, I am just picking out some highlights. Nothing special, nothing, you know. Just think about the shapes of the, uh, uh, of the hair. This one? Or this one? This is actually not a pencil, this is my blending stump. And this blue one is my uh, my 2B. And I'm going to go in and I am going to darken his hair up. And as I go, I'm going to leave in little bits for the highlight. And because my hair is going to be darker than the background, you're going to see it not by a hell of a lot, but enough. It's got so much graphite on it, see, that it actually uh, it works as a pencil. And I'm going to use it in a second, or two, or three, or four, to put in extra highlights. Okay, again, this is not the best paper. I'm just using printer paper. That's why I'm getting my paper is starting to buckle because I'm pushing hard on it I'm, I'm not using the best material I can but it's just to, you know for showing you guys how to do it get yourself decent drawing paper not sketching paper draw a nice good drawing paper that has a little bit of tooth on it water pa color paper works really well just get yourself some 90 gram watercolor paper cheap at the, at the at the art supply store or at, at the, the, the grocery store and, and work on that. It'll do wonders uh, for your drawing. Here, I'm, um, I'm using El Cheapo printer paper. 
because it is just something that worked out and I had by hand when I scratched them out. Using the side of the pencil to put in my darks. Now remember, I'm going to go over this, but take your time. When you're doing this, don't go as fast as I am. Sharpen my pencil again. Take your time. Lay down an even layer of, uh, of graphite. Even layer of graphite. Don't try doing it all in one go. Just like watercolors, you want to work in layers. Ogres, watercolors, and onions, and Vikings, layers. That's why I'm used. That's why I used the standard HB 2B. Broke my pencil. That's why I pushed it too hard on it. So it's it's standard 2B HB 2B. And then I'm gonna finish the whole thing off with 6B and then my blending stuff. Try going into the direction of the hair, it will work best if you, because you can see it later on. So my hair is going this way, kind of like a helmet way, and then this part will be completely in shadow because it will be the darkest, 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 darkest. I love 6B pencil. I don't tend to not to go darker. If I want any darker, I will get myself some charcoal. I don't want to do that at the moment. I'm going to use my 6B. This thing is just a pencil extensioner because my pencils are short and I have humongous hands. So I like using a pencil extensioner. Okay, I'm going to go back into the eye. Find all the dark. And because this is very soft, it will get nice and dark. This, w this time I'm going to stay away from my light areas. Completely. They will get smoothed out uh, when I use my blending stump. I'm leaving a little extra in the eye because I don't want the eye to be completely black. Picking up my dark, 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 darks. These are the darkest of the darkest. This is what on your picture look black. If you can't find those, if you're using a reference, squint and you'll find them. It'll it'll bring up the values for you. A lot of this when you're doing this is common sense. Where does my light come from? What well, is breaking the continuation of light? What emotion am I bringing into my character? Okay. I'm gonna make this part darker because this part would be more in shadow than the left one. As so we just mentioned where the light will come from. Little circle emotions. You can always clean it back up. See how this light is compared to that one? I'm gonna use the blending stump later on to put in the graduations. See? Dark, mid, light. <clears throat> Think, where do my highlights go? Where do my shadows go? What will be the darkest part of my drawing? What will be the lightest part of my drawing? <clears throat> Constantly check yourself. Where do they go?
This is my dark, dark, dark. Am I still in the picture? Am I still in the picture? Alright. Yes. Drop a little. Sorry about that. Putting my dark, dark, darks in the hair. Thinking of where I want my highlights to be, dark mid light. Most highlights are covered with dark on both sides. It's just graphite. You can always change it back up. Turn your paper around as you work. It'll make the, the world a difference. Same thing as get the right materials, get the right piece of paper. Pieces of paper is more important than pencil. You can draw a great portrait with just an HB pencil. But if your paper bites, that will be super duper hard. Because we already have almost three layers of graphite, the 6B will make it nice and dark real quick. But I'm still skipping parts. so I've roughed all that in um, where is my dog dogs going to be there's going to be a very big shadow going about here and again about here so I'm, I'm going to put that in like that and this part will be kind of dark too because of the light coming from this part And I know you can see kind of lines and stuff on it. It'll change it up when I go and put in the uh, work with my um, blending stump. Um, and I'm not using the blending stone quite yet. I am going to in a second. Um, if I look at the eye, there's going to be a deep shadow underneath the eye because of where the point of light is coming from. Like that. And it will be a little darker about here too. Like that. You don't want to go too dark because you'll make it look like he's crying. I want to darken this up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to use my blending stump. What you want to do with your blending stump is grab yourself a new piece of paper with it. Best trick I ever learned. Stick your hand on top of it because you will no longer sm smear your, your pencil. Now, as, I, as you can see, look. It still has a lot of graphite on it. I want to leave my highlights. I don't want to touch my highlights with a blending stump. And I'm going to go in and blend it up. This motion, but small, small circular motions. And you will see they will pick up the graphite and make transitions. And I can draw with it because it's got the graphite on it. I can add stuff where it is. wasn't graphite and it will deposit it. So I'm going to actually take my eraser and clean up his chin a little bit because I've got my guy line still in it. Okay, so I'm gonna let's see, I'm gonna give him some character lines. Go it in there. It will be a big sh sh shadow right there.
because we know that there's a, uh, a protrusion right there. Just a minute. Take your time. This doesn't have to go all in one go. Just like with everything else, it'll take some time to build up the two layers. And would this be the last time I put my pencil to it? No. I can still come back in with my pencil, dock in certain areas, light in certain areas, and go for it. I am going to try working from one to the other part right now. So his, his ear is right there. I can go over the outside and smooth that out a little more. Get rid of my white spots. I'm going to have his cheekbone right here cast a shadow. That goes from there. And you can go to certain parts if you darken up with your blending stump, like right here, for instance. Move it over, pick it up. So you can use your draw, your graphite as a, uh, uh, or your, um, your, your color, your pencil drawing actually as a pellet. And I'm not getting it dark enough, so I'm going to grab my lightest pencil and go over it again to see if I can get the contrast I want. No, I'm going to have to use my 6B for that one. That's not my 6B. There's my 2B. Uh, let's see. Hold it right there. And go like that, that. And go like this. And I'm going to take my blending stump and smooth it out. There we go, that's better. See the, the contrast? That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. How do I know where they go? Because I'm looking at what kind of shapes they are. What kind of shapes are my shadows? You know, there's deep shadows underneath the nose. Shadow going right here. Good way of practicing these or um, black and white pictures, stuff like that. Okay, Didi. <clears throat> line certain parts up where I don't want too much graphite. Put in the chin. I'm using my blending stump to smooth it all out. And it will pick up some graphite so I can use it to to add shadows as well. So I'm going in with my blending stump on my dot part. Coming back in, depositing more graphite. Instead of using my pencil, I'm using my blending stump to draw with. That's why you should never clean them. The more you're using, the better they are. Just keep several, you know, in in several stages of nastiness. I guess would be the word. cheekbone would be and here's the deep deep shadow that I made so I wanna I wanna really emphasize that one and transition it into this one and I'm gonna go in and darken this part up a lot because this is where the light gets last that's uh, 
for most isn't. Kind of looks like product, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to take my 6B <clears throat> and I'm going to go over it again to see where I want my, my darker parts. I don't particularly care much for this eye. It's probably because of the highlight on top of it. So I'm going to darken the highlight. Um, I also don't like the fact that his eye is getting too too much white around it. Like this part right there. There's too much white around it. It makes him look all psychotic and crap. So I'm going to take part of the highlight out too. See how much I've fixed it? <coughs> Put in the shade again. Just now very lightly going over parts to make the third transition. Constantly reminding myself, shadows go where, shadows go where. I'm going to darken this part because it is a quite a significant uh, part of his mouth. And I'm going to darken this part going up there. And if you use it light, you don't have to blend this in. Make sure to you make your um, your lines round. There isn't much that is straight on the human face, so you really want to concern yourself with making round lines more your lines going round than anything else. I'm staying away from getting too close to the line because I'm going to bore them out. this part darker too because the light comes from over there extend that shadow over there define the more of the shadow up here Let's see I want to move this part up there and then I'm going to make another going to go like this and darken that whole area up there because I want to have this dark too. So kind of go like that. And if it's too dark, just take yourself a pencil because now it's starting to look like he's got a beard. So I'm going to take my eraser and instead of going like this, I'm going to dab it. Even though it's just a, a regular eraser, it will pick up the graphite like this. You got a very light touch. You can go like that. Okay. I'm gonna grab my blending stump. Excuse me. Redefine this line and smooth this all out. I don't know that this one will go over there. And then there will be a shadow right there. On there. There we go. I think this line is too dark. So I'm just gonna use my eraser and go over it. and use my blending stump to redefine it again. Once again, just going over it with my blending stump, smoothing the transitions out. Circle, 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 circles. Circle, circle, circles. 
And I'm gonna have not the highlights be this light, so I'm gonna go over the stuff on this hair. Hair's not that important. But you can see that, yeah, you know, I gave him the indication of where it's going and what it's doing. Okay, last part that I'm gonna work on is the stuff above his eyebrow. And I'm gonna mainly use my blending stone for that. Running some to define the parts on top of his eyes. And there you go. It looks kind of weird because of my paper is buckled. Yay, Didi's back. So there we go. We're in over an hour. So um, does anybody have a question that you want to throw out right here? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, does this make it a little clearer? Um, does everybody else have a question? Exactly. I work from light to dark, just like watercolors, and once you get your darkest parts in, you use your blending stump. Uh, as you can see, my blending stump picked up so much graphite, I can probably just draw with it. Look at it. Circular motions to, you know, get it to this part. Yes, the lint marks are defined by the shapes of the face. Um, Skinny people will have, you know, uh, if you look at the, the, the lines that I made right here, this one and this one are the same because his cheekbones go over here and over here. There's a big area up here that defines this shadow and this part. These parts are more defined by the human being that you're drawing. Some of them have bigger bags than others. Some of them have... Yeah, it's darker in some of them, and it's lighter in some. It it it's up to you. That's personal preference. Um, this part is basically the eye socket that goes right here. This part is defined by the fact that your upper lip curls upwards. So this part is always light because this is the highest part. This is darker because this is where the nose and the filter meets each other. So there's a dip. That dip is black. Nostrils black of course um, this is kind of defined how stark you want your shadows to be if it's the light is more towards on top of on top of him instead of from um, from this side going going this way the higher it is the, d the smaller the shadow would be the lower the fa uh, the the um, um, bit of the more behind the light will be the deeper these shadows would be. I could still decide and go, okay, well, he's going further away from the light. Then these things would be even darker and darker and darker and darker until this part might ex this part might actually be completely in black. So your landmarks for the shadows are defined how far the light comes on his face and by the shapes of the face. You know, as again, there's a high there's a high spot here and there's a high spot here. Henceforth, you got light and dark around it there's a high spot right here so you've got light with dark around it there's high a uh, high point here with darks around it there is dark right here light here with dark around it see there's another ball right here we shaded those ball 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 sticking out straight let's remember your robot face and how to shade it 